Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Saving the World podcast with Luke McMichael and Martin Resney. Today, we have another special guest with us, Dave Volok from Alberta, Canada, uh, working on the new tiered democratic governance system. He's got a great website, tierddemocraticgovernance.org. We'll link to you. Um, but we're, we're here to kind of get his opinions on how we can improve our democracy, uh, both in Canada and in the world. So, uh, Dave, so great to have you here with us. Uh, do you want, we'll give you a couple minutes here to introduce yourself and uh, let us know a little bit about tiered democratic governance. Oh, hello there. Uh, th thanks for letting me in on your program here. This is, uh, you guys are probably the first serious interview I've had since I've been starting this, which is about since 1997. And uh, so it's really good to get a little recognition here. Uh, I guess uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, born and raised in uh, Brooks, Alberta here. So uh, I come from a farming family and uh, I kind of went around the world a little bit to spend some spent quite a bit of time in Edmonton and I was in Europe for a couple of years in Czechoslovakia and then uh, kind of came back and uh, so I've been back in Brooks for 23 years and uh, still my, my family's still here so I kind of enjoy it I kind of enjoy being in a small town and all lots of people I grew up with here so, so Mar Sorry, Martin, Martin. I, did, I didn't mention before but Martin's actually from uh, the Czech Republic so it'd be yeah, interesting I yeah, I recognize, where, where, I recognize the name there, so he's either a Czech or a Slovak. So. <laughs> uh, where, where, where in Czechoslovakia were you? I was in Brno in the first year, and mm. uh, then I was in Trnava for the second year. Yeah, I actually live in Brno. Small Most world, eh? <laughs> yeah, we might, we might even pass each other on the street sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small world. All right, yeah, so so let us know how you, how you got into the tier democratic governance. I know on your website it says you kind of were involved with political groups, kind of got a little disenfranchised with that whole thing, and said I'm going to make a whole new tier democratic, uh, whole new democratic system from scratch essentially, and because we're going to fix all these limitations of the current system and make a whole better system. So kind of walk us through that process a little bit and give us kind of your uh, your take on the ups and downs or or what are the specific key points that are different. Um, well, I guess uh, uh, as a as a young person, I had a lot of idealistic intentions, and uh, uh, at that time, I wasn't very political at all. Uh, I always did vote in the elections, but uh, I never there were a couple elections I didn't even know who I was going to vote for until I got into the ballot box, and uh, so I took my voting uh, very seriously. I knew I had to do it, but. Uh, for the most part, I was apolitical. I, I voted for different parties and different candidates, and I'm not too sure why I voted for some and not the others, but I did take my voting seriously. And I was kind of involved in the petroleum industry, and uh, one of our governments made a real boneheaded move in 1985. And I thought, you know, if anybody understands how the petroleum industry works and the laws of economics, of Economics 101, the law of supply and demand, you could have predicted how this, this program would have not worked out so well. And so rather than complain about it, I decided I had to do something. And it's uh, Edmund Burke kind of said, uh, the, the only thing for a, uh, a, a an evil person to succeed is for 10 good men to do nothing. And I said, well, in order for a fool to succeed, I guess us or the wise have to get involved. And so I decided to join a political party. And I just didn't join just to be on a list or something like that. I, got, I jumped in and I was uh, working on, on elections, work, uh, working on the boards and all that stuff. And I was kind of a, a bit of a backroom player. And uh, I did this for about six years. And as I was going through these years, attending lots of political meetings, and I, uh, and I was coming to the realization that there's something not quite right here. You know, like this, this is, there's just coming out of balance here. And towards the end of this, this time, my time, uh, I was working for a fellow who I thought would have made a good candidate. And we we're doing our internal party election. And one of our strategies was to visit the party members. And so uh, we would go to, we would phone ahead to the party member and say, hey, we got uh, this, this fellow, this Herb guy, he, he want, he's running for the, for the position. Would you like to have a little visit with him? And so we would phone him up and then we would drive over to his place and uh, Herb would give his little spiel about why he should be elected as a party the candidate. And uh, we would try to get see as many party members as we could. You know, our, our idea was, was to, to kind of endear Herb to, to, uh, to vote, for, vote for him, but also because there were several candidates, we thought we could get the second support if we did this type of thing. So 
Uh, my job in these meetings was to be the bad cop. And so what I, what I had to do was uh, I had to limit the, the visit to about 15 minutes because, you know, you get some people talking politics, no talk, talk all day. <laughs> so we wanted to see as many people as we could in an evening or a Saturday afternoon or whatever. And so I would be the guy to say, okay, time's up, but we got to go. And then, you know, Herb would kind of go for another couple of minutes and then we kind of leave and hopefully we left a positive impression. Mm-hmm. So it was during one of these minutes, or one of these meetings, I should say, uh, that we had a retired school teacher and she was kind of working with her knitting needles, doing all this stuff, and Herb was giving his political spiel. And I said, that I was watching this, and I says, she doesn't know a darn thing about this guy, even after 15 minutes. How can she vote wisely for him? And then I started to get this big tumult of misinformation coming. I mean, it says, everything that we do in elections, we don't know anything about. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we don't, we're not voting under, for, for any kind of wisdom. You know, by Herb, he can be an embezzler, he can be a, a wife abuser, he can be an alcoholic, you know. Hmm. She can't tell that in 15 minutes. And so, anyways, this kind of was spinning around in my head there that we don't really know the people that we're voting for. And uh, and as the days went on, the campaign went on, I was still part of the campaign, and this was just kind of wearing me down. I says, we don't know about the people that are on the ballot. We know nothing about them. It doesn't matter what party they belong to. And so I was uh, taking one of my long walks. I was walking to the grocery store and kind of walking back, thinking about this, how we don't know the people we are voting for. And all of a sudden, I got this great big whole deluge of information just coming down on me. And I just, you know, it was just amazing how this so much came to me at so once. And and what it what it says is that uh, Western democracy is not set up for the voters to know much about the politicians that they're voting for. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. And the party is not going to, this system is not going to reform itself. It's, it's just going to stay the way it is. And then... Coupled with that is also an alternative system, uh, which eventually became the tiered democratic uh, governance. So this whole thing of that we need to be voting for people that we know something about, uh, this was kind of spinning around in my head and I had this new system coming up, is that we have to reduce the size of our electoral districts. Okay, so like in Alberta right now, we have uh, 40,000 people in a provincial district and about 100,000 for a federal district. and I said, we got to get this down to about 200 people. Okay, so then that, that way is that the neighbors are kind of voting for their fellow neighbors. They know something about the person uh, that is, uh, uh, that, that they know that the person of a good character, they've got capacity for governance, they're good people in the neighborhood. We've seen them in action. We have chat with them. We have meetings with them. And, you know, we kind of look at their lifestyle and says, hey, these are, these are good people to vote for. And of course, that raises the problem is if the electoral districts are 200, that means our, our legislatures are going to be really, really full of lots of representatives. And that gets kind of expensive and cumbersome. And so it, during when I got this eureka that came down on, that came down on me that, that, that is, is that we can't really have that many people in government as, as elected representatives. And so what came up is that we had the, the tiers. Okay. And so the people at the bottom tier who were elected at the bottom tier, they would have their meetings. And I call this kind of the the neighborhood representative. And these neighborhood representatives, they would meet with other neighborhood representatives and they would kind of get to know each other a little bit. They know how they work a meeting and how they listen to people and what kind of ideas they got. And and, uh, are they open to new ideas? And so basically at this level, the neighborhood representatives not the, not, the gen, not, 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 not the general people down here, but the neighborhood representatives would be voting for the person at the next level. Okay, it's been, and why? Well, because they know something about the people that are kind of ready for this level here, not us down here. And so the whole system is kind of based on a tier by tier basis is that the, 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 this, the lower tier would elect the people in the higher tier. And then this higher tier would then elect people at the next higher tier. And so as we, each tier would be a bit of a filter for the people that have the good character and the capacity for governance. And so uh, that's that's how the system came into being. And so when we got to the top tier, we had some pretty uh, pretty good quality people at the top. And uh, and and so that's you want you want you want the best people that society can offer in those positions, making those big decisions. Hmm. Right. And uh, so this was kind of at that time it was kind of really jumbled in me, and it took me. 
probably you know a couple of years maybe to sort this all out because even after my little eureka i was constantly thinking about this and i was kind of refining it in my head and making how it would work and, and uh getting all the pieces together and i was also kind of adding to this too is that uh these people at the top of the tier or maybe somewhere in the middle as well too we also have to learn how a different way of getting along okay because if we're always sniping at each other i'm smarter than you and i'm smarter than her and so vote for me is that we really can't have that kind of attitude in this in this new system because if we're always fighting each other well you know the, the whole system we got to show is cooperation and based on consensus on consultation and so in chapter four of my book uh is that we have to learn how to consult and so i well i'm just going to consultation i think if i ask everyone uh if I ask everyone, says, well, how do you rate yourself as a, as a consultative person? Everyone will say, well, I'm really high. I'm probably one of the best ones there. But, you know, I think we've all been in situations where there's a lot of a lot of people who don't consult. They, they just want to kind of do things their way. And uh, either they acquire the authority so that, where they can, they can implement their way, or they kind of slowly work through a democratic process to see, you know, play the game of politics to see if their way can get implemented in a democratic way. And, that's not really consultation. So, so in chapter four of my book, I talk quite a bit about consultation and uh, uh, what that consultation is, is that you are combining the knowledge, experience, and wisdom of all the people in the room. You start that by having a very frank and open, open conversation. And you say, uh, you give your opinions. We have a societal issue about it. We, have, we give our opinions, but our opinions just to start is what we have to do is we have to kind of listen to everyone okay and uh and if we're in a really consultative spirit is that we are kind of absorbing all these perspectives that the other people have we're exploring we're, we're getting their knowledge we're getting their experience we're getting their wisdom and if we're doing that then we're going to come into one unified voice and so this is the one thing that we have to uh, have to learn uh in this in this tiered democratic government system is we have to learn how to consult how to do that combination Right. And it's right. and it's going to have to be a very, a very conscious and deliberate stuff because the world is teaching us is that what do we do is we fight for our ideas. So let me uh, let me throw a quick question, quick question here as far as um, consulting. So this is something we're we're definitely huge fans of is trying to kind of come to more consensus, more, you know, open logical debate around issues and find the best possible solution. So I really mm -hmm. liked reading that part of your book. Um, there's this new concept called like game A versus game B mentality. Have you ever heard of the, the game B system, which is basically game A is the winner take all, um, you know, uh, cutthroat kind of capitalist type system where, you know, there's winners and losers. Whereas the game B is much more win, win, win situations, uh, trying to kind of just focus on what's best for everybody and getting people to work together. So it's kind of this whole new transition from this kind of capitalist doggy dog mentality to the let's share let's work together mentality of, of kind of the new perhaps maybe post-capitalist world or some kind of new tier democratic world where it's more fair um so i'm really kind of interested in your take on i guess the transition how we get from here to there um you know what's your kind of perfect world look like as far as this tier democratic governance system um if it were to ever become you know very common I, what are your kind of main goals for this system? Well, um, this, this, uh, the, the, the system itself is, is basically, it's based on a consultative, uh, cooperative, and consensual concept. Hmm. And uh, I, I guess uh, I kind of liken it to my life, you know, like I'm kind of getting little aged. I'm 64 years old right now, and I can, I can see, uh, looking back, it says, if I were back when I was 20, with all the knowledge and, and experience that I've got now, I would probably be doing things a little bit different. Mm. And so we have to really, as, 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 as decision makers, if we're called into the TDG as a decision maker, we, we have to say, well, I don't know everything. Okay, I have to learn from the people that, that the TDG has put in front of me to work with them to get all that stuff all together. And it's, and it's kind of like making a big uh, uh, a, a big statue in the middle of the table here and everyone's kind of got their hands in it and they all got some different ideas and we're talking and laughing and, and working this out and you're, you're trying to create something that you would have never created by yourself and, and 
it's got bad. It gets better because you've got all this other, all these other people around you, having their input yeah. into that. And not only that, the TDG finds those people that are really good at doing this. Hmm. And so, like the TDG is a bit of a filter for a consultative spirit. So, if I may, as like focus on the transition part, because I think like we like don't, you don't probably going to get uh, a lot of pushback from. Uh, me and Luke uh, about like the general concept. We we do kind of like this idea, and that's part of the reason why uh, I guess we found you and uh, why we invited you on our podcast. It's just maybe a, the question of transition. Like, how do you think we can get from the world that we have right now in any particular location? Maybe it could be just like a, how like you would even start locally somewhere. And how do you think we could get to a system that you would say is basically tiered? democratic governance as you imagine it somewhere yeah the, the, the transition is very important because it takes it takes a while to change people's minds and even with myself like I, I look at the maturation I've had over the years you know so, so people call it getting getting wisdom and stuff like that and it did it, did, it didn't happen magically uh, you know and even even as I've been working on this TDG it just keeps getting a little better every year that I've, 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 I've kind of Putting, putting the pieces together. So we have to have a maturation that, that goes with that. And so uh, in chapter six, I like to talk about the transition as we go from here to there. And we have to realize that this is not going to be built overnight. And in fact, I'm very clearly stated is that if we just take the TDG electoral structures and put them in place now, they will fail. Okay, and it's because we've been wired in our mind uh, is that when we when we take a certain position, and if we want to if we want to implement that position, we fight 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 until we get it, or we the, the system kind of kicks us off, one of the kicks us out, or whatever whatever the reason is. And so we really have to get away from that uh, uh, that, that mentality. We have to train ourselves. You know, I talk about consultation. As a, I still need practice on it. There are, there are times when I. But I, but I go back, so oh, I wasn't very consultative in this last person I was talking to. So I'm still learning about this. Okay. It's hard. It's really, it, really, it, so, is, it, is really, it is really hard. So in your book, you talk a lot about, um, in your book, you talk a lot about individual groups kind of forming a group of five, uh, a local tier democratic governance. They, they can build a constitution. They can just kind of build a local group. And, and hopefully if enough groups do this over period of a decade or a couple of decades, uh, we can just kind of transition the whole country or world towards this kind of, of government. Um, you know, eventually somehow getting enough people where we can get the political parties interested in it and at some point get some legislation or some kind of change to our electoral system. Uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah, you're kind of getting a little ahead of, ahead, of my, uh, ahead, of, ahead of where I want to go with this here too. But during this early, I divide the, the building the TDG into, into, into do four stages and the first stage and probably second stage is we're trying to build that consultative culture. Right. And so one of the ways that we can do that is that we can kind of give issues to the TGG that aren't going to create a lot of controversy. Okay. So we're not talking about taxes. We're not talking about pensions or whatever. It says, well, we have to build this TDG constitution and well, what do we include in it? Okay. So for example, we need an executive committee. Uh, how do we elect them? Uh, how do we, uh, what authority do they have within our local constitution? Uh, how many should there be? And so these issues aren't going to be the, the skies falling in, in issues. And so we can kind of express our opinions and not get too emotionally attached to them. And as we're going through these TDG constitution issues, and I think there's about 30 to 40 that we need to address, is we are learning how to let go, how to build that consensus and let go of our opinions when the consensus seems to be going <coughs> in a certain direction. And after we make the decision, we, we get to monitor it. Did it work? If it, if it worked, it says, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't like that when we voted for it, but it seems to be working. Or we say it's not working. Well, what do we do? We change it. Okay. So in our current political world, it's that, you know, they want heads on platters, you know, going before and after the decision making type thing. Mm -hmm. And so, and so we got to learn how to work with this. We got to be ready to experiment with new ways of doing the TDG government. And a lot of the stuff in the early TGs are not, is not that, that controversial or life or death or whatever you want. And so we've got the luxury of, uh, of being able to learn how to build consensual decisions with this because these issues aren't really all that important. 
And a lot of these TD constitutional stuff, I got—I have a feeling that most of them are going to get changed as the TDG moves on and gets a little better and reforms itself and stuff like that. Now, uh, Luke, you were, you were talking about uh, later on, uh, so, so the stage that we get with later on, as the TDG gets more credibility, there'll be more people who will be joining. The TDG elections will be going good. The, uh, the, the, the general the membership and the general public will be saying, hey, they've, they've got some really interesting leaders here. These guys seem to know how to work together. Okay, and they've got some ideas. Is that the TG will eventually start commenting on society issues? Now, our current institutions will still be, have responsibility and authority, but the TG will actually be kind of a, in an advisory role. We want you to do this. Hmm. Okay, and again, the general public says, "Hey, you know, these guys seem to know what they're doing, and maybe we got to give this TG a little more serious consideration." And as this credibility builds, there's going to be a natural desire for society wanting to change from uh, from this way and 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 away from you know, and away from the political parties themselves so uh, what, what what's gonna happen in those last days I'm not quite too sure yet uh, mm-hmm. but I, I, I think when that when the societal incentive is there to change it uh, we will find a way to, to make the change okay so like the United States has got a, a a reasonable amending formula for its constitution. You know, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but uh, uh, basically, if three quarters of the states agree to change the constitution, it's changed. And so I kind of see, well, okay, here's here's our here's the American Constitution as it is right now, and here's the new TGG Constitution created by the people in TDG after several years of deliberations, and this is how we want to do things. And if three quarters of the states agree. Then the other quarter have to abide by that. Okay, so the United States has got a formula that's already in place. And my understanding of the Euro- European countries is that they've got a, uh, a a formula as well that they can amend their constitution as well too. And so I, I can see a point where the political party says, you know what, we we you know we really can't continue this way anymore. It's time for us to die a natural death. And in our last days, we will just deal with this transition and the TDG will be taking authority and responsibility of governance at that point. Uh, oh, I, I would say, because uh, I uh, maybe, like I mentioned to you before the recording, I do happen to have a master's degree in political science and what's mm-hmm. sort of from Masaryk University in Brno, actually. And what's sort of fascinating, fascinating to me is that like, I've never heard about anything like this during the whole time I studied there. And since then, very recently, I've heard of your concept and of also of cellular democracy, which is basically just a version of this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Cellular democracy is just only more technical. It's sort of focusing on uh, almost having the society be in a kind of an algorithm because it's like sort of uh, matching these uh, tier democratic structures with uh, evolving geographic units. It's more of a technical side solution to the different kind of problem that arises when you're doing uh, some, something like change of a political system. But uh, in this particular case, I really find it fascinating that what you're proposing, because I've nev- I also never heard anybody propose it like this, like how to actually transition is that you will start as an advisory organization with this sort yeah. of political internal structure and not the one that's already seeking to have the authority. And you're going to develop the culture of like consultation, basically the ability to arrive at the ideas that are measurably the best uh, and after only after you sort of figure out the culture of the advisor organization and prove that it works you will try to convince the uh, general political structures to adopt that that system right it's actually I think that's that's great I don't, I don't think necessarily that it has to work or anything like uh, I think you described yourself quite well how like we actually have to learn how to do some stuff to make to be able to make this work which again it's also interesting because usually when people propose these like radical ideas, they're very convinced that they're great, perfect, they're definitely going to work uh, or something. They usually don't present it as like, yeah, we, we really need to like work at something to be able to even like do this at all. But uh, no, I just because I'm sort of the reason I'm just like babbling right now is just like I'm really struggling to find like uh, counter arguments or like some sort of like what to, how to poke at it because I think it's like uh, surprisingly humble and self-aware yeah. way to approach this kind of uh, political <laughs> yeah. transition thing. Yeah, I, I get a, I get a lot of criticism, well, not a lot of criticism, but the, the, the few critics of the, the TEG and, my, and the Medium Forum, uh, that's an internet forum for discussing all sorts of ideas. 
is that they say, you know, humanity doesn't have the skills to make your TDG work. And I say, well, we have to get them. And that's why the TDG, the electoral structures are not by themselves. We have to learn a new way. We're actually social engineers. And so we, we have to, uh, those of us who become the early TDG builders, okay, uh, we have to say, well, we're, 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 we're actually trying to do a new way of thinking, of collaborating, of working together, coming to decisions, implementing those decisions. And as we get better at it, better things are going to happen. Because I was just talking uh, just recently, talking with Luke, how it's kind of funny that uh, that's like the way we do politics, we don't do anything else and wouldn't tolerate doing anything else. Because like in politics, somebody has like a half-baked idea that's completely untested. And so let's implement it everywhere all at once. And yep. then once it becomes obvious that it doesn't work, because obviously it wasn't tested, so we had no idea whether it would work, uh, then we will like stick with it for 50 more years. Yeah, that's some sort of inertia. It's like if we did anything else in the universe like this way, it would be immediately obvious to everyone. It's just that's not like a sane way to do this. And the way you're describing it, like yeah, yeah, we might not have the capacity right now, but uh, there's no reason why we, if like we just focus on on doing this, why basically by doing the practice run for a yeah. num number of times, where we couldn't develop the like it is a plan that feasibly can develop the ability, as far as I can tell. So it's, yeah, it's it's the, the 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 first five to ten years is just kind of going to be practice. Okay. So I just want to circle back for a sec. Um, you've got the four salient. What do you call them? Um, I'm looking at your website now. Four salient features of the TDG. Mm -hmm. and I think that's just for for the viewer's sake. Um, it's really good to kind of kind of zero in on exactly what you're proposing, and that you know anything beyond that is up for debate, up for kind of you know fine tuning. But I, uh, let, let me just go through them quickly and you, we can kind of talk about it if you have questions or if anyone has, if Martin has questions. So number one is a tiered indirect elections that create the decision making authority for society. So that's where, yeah. you know, 200 people in a neighborhood elect one person and then those 10 neighborhoods elect a district representative and then 10 district representatives um, elect the higher level. So it just simplifies elections so that there's not, you don't need a, a lot of election processes and it's kind of making it so electioneering is kind of shunned or almost banned in some in some cases where you're just yep. electing people for their for their good character. I guess that's number four. So number one is tiered indirect elections. Number two is an independent advisory board focused on the process of governance. This is what we're talking about is just teaching people how to be advisors and having the specifically appointed advisory board to kind of guide the governance process so that it's kind of got to check some balance in, in some way. Yep. Uh, number three is a consultative culture. We we're just talking about now a consultative culture between citizens, elected tiers, and the advisory board. So it's like a three kind of tiered system where everybody's working together to come up with the best solution, you know, constantly changing ideas, constantly open to criticism, and no backbiting, no name calling, all of these things we see today. So a consultative cultures is the third one. And the fourth one is voting based on good character and competence for governance rather than, you know, money or popularity or um, who's got the most, you know, um, likes on Instagram or whatever. <laughs> who's got the best insults? Who's got the best yeah. insults? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, those are the four kind of core concepts. So yeah. I, yeah. Martin, do you have any con questions about those four concepts? Are they all pretty clear? No, I, I, because I'm, that's the thing. I've actually recently re written a constitution for a, a kind of a similar project uh, for uh, uh, Jeff Grobart and the, his idea of land-based capitalism, which sort of attacks this from a very different angle. It's a very sort of economics-based idea. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not, but it contains uh, uh, the, like I said, the cellular democracy idea, which is a kind of a tier democratic system. Uh, although one of the challenges that I saw with that version of it is that it's the cellular concept is, is kind of complicated and very difficult, I think, to explain to people and to quote unquote sell or like the, the workings of it are uh, at times like if you like partially devoted like a supercomputer to be handling it and the part of it was sort of not uh, fully transparent to people, then it could be working fine and, and people wouldn't necessarily have any problems with it. But like your version is basically the the basic version. Like like it's like if we wanted to just go from where we are now to that kind of thing, then I think like this is a great first version of of, of uh, how to 
start and, and do it because it doesn't have too many moving parts, doesn't have like any complicated algorithms or concepts or operations. It's just that uh, it's, it's fairly simple. I, again, like I'm really struggling to find because obviously I could try to criticize in that like, yeah, it's an untested idea. It's a new thing. Nobody has really done anything like this, but it's like, yeah, so we could do a practice run and see if it works. That, that's yeah. not really a criticism that should sit down. I'm just like going to try to think really quickly if there's like a immediate problem because that's the thing. I thought I will be able to criticize it better because uh, because that's the thing. I, I sort of purposely don't learn too much about uh, the, yeah. the the guest and and their stuff. Look look does so that there's a sort of different dynamic in our responses. And because I thought that you are gonna try to propose like going straight to. Uh, having it be the thing with political authority and being the actual political system straight away, and, and, and you really, uh, you really pulled a fast one on me with the thing that's like, no, that's you know, not, not not trying to do the thing that probably wouldn't work right away. So, you're you're, you're, you're yeah. off your game, Martin. You're off your game. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and today I'm really very off my game. Yeah, I like it. That's yeah. good. You stumped Martin. That's probably one of the first in, in 50 interviews or 50 calls we've done. That's the first time I think I've seen Martin kind of at a loss for words to some extent. So that was good. Yeah, I, I just I just like it. <laughs> I just like it. Because also, I haven't uh, told that before uh, the interview. I also, one of my parts of my background is I've been doing uh, debating for 20 years or yeah. plus. And uh, in debating, actually very recently, uh, I, was, I was like writing articles on Medium where I also have a blog. I wrote a couple of articles about our project contribute, the project that we're working on now with uh, on one of the other guests with Nova McCord. And uh, uh, the things that I, when I was sort of writing the articles, I was uh, uh, I sort of, ah, I forgot where I was going with this. It was very important. Uh, <laughs> no, is this connected to the whole uh, democracy, democracy thing? I forgot, I lost it. I was so, so close to making a point. Uh, <laughs> we can come back to it. Let me let me go on a quick aside. We'll come back to Martin. So I, I'm, I'm also obviously very excited about the idea. Um, I'd love to kind of run my own TDG at some point, either here locally or even online. Like the, even the three of us in some ways, it's kind of a uh, online TDG in, in some forms because we're thinking about this. We're kind of talking about what what might make a good constitution and kind of bouncing ideas off each other. Um, so that was kind of our goal with the whole project contribute is to gather as many people together from all around the world that are just interested in improving democracy and improving the world and, and really saving the world in any way we can. It's kind of our concept. Martin. Just oh, just, a... I re remember the, the idea. Uh, so I recently sort of connected one point with the whole debating thing. Because many people think that debating is terrible because they see the polarized debates of yeah. politicians but the thing is like if uh, debaters at debating competitions try to do what the debates uh, are like uh, the political debates they would lose they would lose so hard in the debate yeah. because the whole idea is that uh, you're not supposed to be doing fallacies like mainly personal attacks yeah. because i sort of recently realized that they really like 90 percent of the problem in the politics and media and communication and everything it's really just the personal attacks. Like everybody is super focused in all communications in just uh, making fun of the other person, in denigrating the other person, in just constantly arguing in personal arguments. Like uh, even if it's somebody that like we were debating issues, they present like the name of the video about it uh, on YouTube is like uh, somebody destroyed somebody else or something like that, as if that's the important aspect of it. And uh, I've recently watched like what's the sort of best wisdom of like the best debaters in the world on this and the most popular video by a debater is by Bo Seo who is uh, I think uh, is, is a complicated uh, heritage I think is partially Australian uh, debater who won uh, the high school world schools debating championships twice I think uh, with his team and he has his idea is, is like pretty close to actually what you're talking about in the more specific terms because uh, in the like figuring out how to do the consulting culture i think like a lot of it, it has been solved by like the ancient greeks in like the philosophy of rhetoric it's like already there's like a whole manual actually for this and uh in that uh he says that basically what people need to do is instead of watching these polarized personal attacky debates of like people they don't know he specifically mentioned but like talking debates of other people you don't know how they're like just attacking each other what you're supposed to do instead to like, develop the abilities of like speaking and thinking properly in this case, like in like your consultative cooperative mode of, of, of communication. What you need to do is to have debates, but with people you know personally, 
that yep. don't have a public audience. And by doing that repeatedly, that's how you specifically develop the right capacity. So like actually the practice of this type is exactly what's supposed to develop the capacity, according to the one of the best debaters living yeah. currently. And I definitely 100% concur as like one of the uh, people who have been also involved in debating for a long time. And it's sort of like the common wisdom that only is like common in the circles of debating, uh, like debaters, yeah. like people who participate in debating competitions, because the rhetoric of this level is not even taught at schools anymore. That's like one of the, my sort of long-standing pet peeves is that it's not part of education, even though it's like a 2000 year old solved art. Like, like we know 100% how it's supposed to work, how to do it. And it's just not being done anyway. Yeah. So that's actually what fuels my belief that if we try to do it as like a practice run and just people were practicing it in large numbers for a, a bunch of time under these specific parameters, they would learn it because I know from my 20 years of experience is that that's how you learn it. Because yeah. I've seen everybody who did this learn it yeah. in those debating programs. One of our best, uh, one of our best earlier videos was, was called uh, Making, Make Debating Cool Again. Um, <laughs> it's, got, it's, it, it's pretty fun. So I, like, that's something that I've definitely improved in just two years of doing podcasts like this or just yeah. meeting so many different people. Um, this kind of way. And I highly recommend it to anyone who's watching this, make your own podcast, you know, make your own things, try to get together with friends and, and whoever and meet with them for an and hour. Don't care about the, don't care about the size of the audience. Don't care. About the if you start, <laughs> if you start getting about that, then you slip into the personal attacky. I'm destroying somebody else mode just to get more views. And that's what's happening to everybody on YouTube yeah. who's pursuing large yeah. audience. Focus on the personal growth and the learning and coming to better solutions by talking with other people. So, yeah, I I, I was a member of a debate club for about a year, and it was and it was real interesting. Is that uh, the the you know the issues that we discussed at the at the debate club? You score points by listening to what the other side said, and then you find uh, you know something's wrong with it or right with it or whatever, and. Uh, and, and so that's how you score your points. And then part of this, my part time at the debate club was I had to be a judge in a debate club. And the listening that you have to do to judge these things properly is just immense yeah. because there's so many yeah. things being flown around. And uh, it's, a, it's a great experience. And I really recommend that a lot of people get into this just for the practice. Can I just get back to my, my four salient features? Okay. Yeah. So I was, uh, Okay, so what I've done is I've I've uh, I'm quite uh, adamant that uh, that the people have to follow these four salient features. Okay, uh, like the, okay, number one is tiered indirect elections. Okay, uh, so that's basically to get our, get around the fact that we we vote for someone that we know something about. Okay, so we're not uh, uh, we're we're not we're not voting on party lines or superficial issues or whatever so we're actually voting for people that seem to know what's know what's going on so they have we have to keep that so I'm, these four salient features i want i want the early tdg builders to keep keep up them but other than that i let them do whatever they want and i also want them as much as possible to write their own constitution well why well that gives them something to do Okay. Something to practice so, on. We all need practice. That's where the practice comes in. Like, I think there's at least 30 clauses that they have to put together to write their own uh, constitution. And so some of, the, some of these are probably not a big deal, but this is all gives you, this all gives you a, a practice into rebuilding that, that consultative consensual culture that, that we want is that we work through these, we work through these things and work them out. And, and I do have a bit of a template constitution uh, out there and uh, they can take that and kind of, uh, make some small amendments or they can do something totally different but basically they have people need something to do as they're building this and writing your constitution ratifying it and uh, making amendments that are conducting elections as a, as the rules say and so all this is learning and making changes and all that so that's that's what the people are going to be doing in, in these early stages hmm. and so that's that's a practice ground so, know, sort of like, so, so, so like, so like, so like, so like when you're learning how to play hockey, I'm not a hockey player at all or, or any, or any sport, you know, you kind of have to start off small and eventually you come up uh, with more and more skills as time goes on. So you're using the example because Luke is Canadian. Yeah. Or, or because yeah. you found the ideal sport between Canada and Czech Republic. Yeah. Or the host <laughs> of this. 
podcast. Yeah. Well yeah, I know. Like I went to my bus stops in Toronto. There was uh, I was close to that stadium there, and I always saw all these kids with their big hockey bags getting up and on the bus. So that's, that's where they're getting their practice. So I have but, to uh, I have to okay. ask quick, now, uh, Dave. Quick question. Um, yep. So how many groups? You've been doing this for a long time, almost twenty three years since you kind of started writing the first book. Uh, yep. How many groups have you seen kind of do this so far? Has there been many? Is it uh, has there been any groups that kind of zero so far? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> we gotta fix Actually, that, Dave. We gotta I, get uh, it going. <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe about, we should tell the debaters. Maybe. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a fellow about ten years ago. I had a fellow from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And he found my website and he was pretty excited. And uh, and uh, so. So we exchanged quite a few emails and he was actually he was printing out flyers and he was getting around to his neighborhood and uh it it just it did it, did, it didn't fly and uh you know the 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 general public is just kind of not ready for this yet so i wasn't ready back then you know uh from my responses i get from the forum called medium uh you know it's still a lot of people think that they can fix this democracy by per, by putting a certain politician in prison, you know, and all will be well. No, it's not going to be all be well. It's, you know, it's, it's not. And, uh, mm-hmm. and so, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to find those people. It's, uh, you know, the, the medium forum, I find it, I've got, uh, you know, fairly well-educated audience and they, they know that there's something wrong, but I just can't get them to take that next step. Hmm. You know, okay, can really serious investigate these ideas. And well, you know, Dave is kind of saying something, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll write another article about putting a certain politician in prison. And that'll, 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 that'll bring democracy. That's where they're kind of at. Hmm. No, I, so, I was serious. Uh, we need to tell the, we need to tell the debaters. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm well, definitely, I, I, I'm definitely committed to, to trying at least to get a couple of groups together. You know, I'll do one okay. myself, obviously. And, and this is kind of what we have been doing off and on for almost two years, you know, following this kind of a pattern we're getting better at it, you know, and we're starting to try to bring more people into it. So I'm kind of, um, you know, doing it on the local level where you can meet in, in a house would be, I think, optimal. But if even doing it online like this, we're kind of meeting in our house right yep. now to some extent, right? Well, just currently developing uh, with Nova McCord project is called Project Contribute Now. It's supposed to be a social media platform for exactly this type of communication that actually Nova also independently, because he already has a prototype that he designed, is already kind of a tiered democratic system in in and of itself because the idea that he had was that uh, if you had like a social medium conversation and you had uh, like a room where it could be any number of people in in, in his system, but like every time somebody says something, it it at first is only shown to like a a small group of adjacent people. And Mm -hmm. only if those people in that small adjacent group basically vote for a particular idea that, yeah, that's the best idea that we have, then it gets shown to more people and the more people like sort of uh, also like if your ideas have, are, are being voted up a lot, then that you are gaining in visibility in that sort of system. So it's basically already architecturally a kind of a tiered democratic system. So it's sort of interesting, like how you know, like these people sort of converge on these on the, these sort of similar ideas that are each different and for a different application. Like one could be social media and one could be economical. And uh, in your case, strictly political or communication focused and a communication person. And it's just, I think we do specifically plan to get more people involved to test that platform. And like one of the things that we, if like we get the people, we would definitely, uh, would be a good idea, I think, to let them talk about or try to engage in would be something like, like your project, actually. Mm-hmm. It would be one of the best directly suited things for, for that kind of platform. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to speak to anyone, and, and uh, you know, uh, just give give me a link, and uh, and I'll uh, and and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get together on, on some of these things here. Absolutely. But, yeah. but you know, even with the TDG, uh, if you've been into the book, I've got a big, I've got a big circle. You know, the top here kind of sits here, and the people kind of sit down here, and ideas can float from the bottom all the way up to the top, or they can go from the top back to the bottom. Or maybe the advisors are seeing something. Or the advisors don't have any official power in the TDG, but they'll see something. They'll start making suggestions. So that, you know, yeah. you know, stuff just can, they can flow across and this, and then somehow we somehow they all kind of connect together and say, "Oh, this is what we need to do." I, and it's not because any one person had it. It just it just happened. <laughs> have one more question, Dave. Have you thought much about the um, the role of artificial intelligence 
in a, in a t tier DG to kind of offer some kind of, you know, scientific advice or expert advice from, you know, the chat GTP kind of um, mind frame to try to guide people a little bit like an educator. It's just giving you kind of education based on what's out there on how to govern better. Uh, have you thought much about that? I haven't played with it much, uh, you know, from uh, I, I see some people on Medium and they're 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 letting the chat GPT write their essays for them and they post them up. And, you know, I can I got I can't say for sure, but they're they're kind of bland. Yeah. You know, and they might have some good ideas in them, but they just don't have that feel. And so, you know, you get about a third of the way through and you just stop reading. Yeah, and, it's it's uh, it's definitely got a certain purpose to kind of just kind of a check it's a checks and balance in some ways it's kind of an additional tool that people can kind of use to learn about particular kinds of governance you know how does this kind of governance work and it might be able to kind of answer basic oh. questions but then you I kind actually, of build on it i think that there might be, might be a thing like what you train it on like if you actually got this sort of tiered democratic uh, governance consultations going on and they were pretty good and you train an ai on that maybe that could be a way how to like summarize like regardless of how many people are talking about stuff, it would just basically summarize what they have come up with mm. collectively. Yeah. I think I like, I think that's a, a way of maybe that could be used. It's like it, it, yeah. can, it can be provide like an FAQ. See, it could it could scan your whole website, all four of your books, all of your medium articles, and basically put it into a repository so anybody can ask any question about a TDG and it can go and kind of reference your site uh, and maybe other TDG sites. Well, uh, actually, you now you're answer. getting closer to like a bit of a, a, a creepy application. You basically can make like a clone of your mind that people <laughs> can talk to even like long after you're dead kind of thing. Yeah. Think, like number of people are thinking about this sort of application. It's, it's yeah. your it's your legacy, Dave. It's your legacy. It's yeah. great. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I was reading up that the that the lawyers, the legal profession, is starting to use things like Chat DBT when they're putting their dispositions together, it's, and you know, basically, it gives them a really good first draft. Yeah. And and they're using it as a first draft, and then they can kind of see where they go with that. And I, sure. I think that's that's where a lot of it is going to go. And so I can see in a TDG meeting is that they're uh, they're debating an issue and they're trying to say, well. How does this really work? Well, someone just gets on the chat GDP and puts it on the screen and they read it through. But not saying that that provides the answer, but it may provide something that leads to the answer. Yeah, that's interesting. So. OK, well, um, is there any other fi final thoughts that we talked about a fair bit today already just to kind of get a, a good brief introduction? Obviously, go check out Dave's website, um, read his book. It's took me about three hours to get through most of it. It's a great, great read, I thought, uh, it's for people who are interested in new forms of politics um, and reach out to Dave or us if you're interested in getting involved in any way uh, with with new forms of governance, tiered governance or any kind of saving the world um, initiative of any kind. We're always interested in in, uh, in working together in whatever ways we can in a consultative manner. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today, Dave. Is there any final comments or final uh, things you'd like to get out there to everybody? No, this has been great. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, I've been kind of awaiting this for a long time for getting interviewed like this. And uh, so I appreciate that you giving the time, and hopefully we can move this a little further down the path and get a few more people interested. Absolutely, Martin. Any uh, final comments or questions from your side? Last chance if you have any hardballs. <laughs> yeah, in the last second, I figured out the fatal flaw. So <laughs> idea. No, I would just like to say thank you. Uh, it doesn't happen very often that I'm introduced to an idea that I just like uh, in politics. I think it's been a while since uh, yeah. there's been something in politics that I like. Well, I'll okay. read, read the books, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, if, if you do find if you do find some more fatal flaws, I'd appreciate uh, you letting me know, and I usually address these things. Excellent. No, no, no. I, I definitely try to bring this to the attention of some debaters because I think debating about this is one of the best way to get people involved. Yeah. The right kind of people for this to start. Yeah. Excellent. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, we'll be in touch again soon, and let's save the world together. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.